Hey, what's going on everybody? Today we're going to cover the transform property in CSS. The transform property lets you rotate, scale, skew, or otherwise translate an element. Here's what we're going to do. We'll create a div section. I will give this div an ID of box one. Then within the box, let's say the word hi. Let's head to our style sheet. Within my style sheet, I will take our ID of box one set the width and height to be 250 pixels. Then I will give this div section a border of five pixels solid. Let's increase the font size. 13 EM is fine. Then text align center. Hey, let's change the background color too while we're at it. I'll pick a greenish color. That's pretty good. I'm also going to remove some of the margin around the body of our document. Body, margin, zero. All right, so the transform property. The first transformation I'll show you is translate. We can translate X on the X axis, translate Y on the Y axis, or both with just translate. Let's begin with translate X. So after translate X, add a set of parentheses. Whatever value you place within the set of parentheses, we will translate this element on the X axis. If I were to set translate X to be 50 pixels, this element will move to the right by 50 pixels. That's 100, 200. Negative numbers will move the element to the left. Percentages are fine too. If I set translate X to be 100%, this element will translate to the right by 100% the width of this element. With a negative percentage, that will translate the element to the left. It could effectively hide that element. Then with negative 50%, we should see just half of this element. A lot of these transformations can be done in pixels or percentages. There's also translate Y for the Y axis. If I were to translate by 50 pixels on the Y axis, that moves the element down. Negative 50 would move the element up. By 100%, we will move this element down by 100% the height of the element. Then negative 100% will effectively hide the element. You can combine both of them too with just translate, but you need two values, the translation on the X axis then the y-axis. If I set the first number to be 50, well, 50 pixels, that's an x-translation. The second value is a y-translation. Now we're moving the element to the right and down. Negative values will move the element to the left and then up. Those are translations for the transform property. Then we have rotations. We can rotate on the x-axis, Within rotate X, we set a number of degrees. If I were to set rotate X to be 45 degrees, we begin rotating on the X axis. That's 45. This is 90, you can't even see it. 135. With 180, it should be kind of upside down. That is an X rotation. Then we have Y. Rotate Y, we'll start with 45 degrees. That's 45. 90, you can't even see it anymore. 135. 180. Then lastly, we have Z rotation. That's 45. This is 90. 135. 180. Those are different rotations. Their scale. We can scale X or scale Y. One corresponds to 100%. 1.1 is 110%. If I were to set scale X to be 2, we're scaling this element on the X axis by 200%. 3 would be 300%. Any value below 1 would, in a way, compress it on the X axis. And here is 0.25. We also have scale Y. Scale Y set to 2. 
would scale this element on the y-axis by 200%. That's 300. Here's 0 0.5. And here's 0 0.25. You can combine both x and y too with just scale, but you need two values. So by default, it's 1, 1 for 100%. Let's scale on the x-axis and the y-axis by 200%. And here's 300. That is scale. Then we have skew, skew x or skew y. If I were to set skew x to be 45 degrees, we are skewing this element on the x-axis. Here's 90, 135, and 180. The same applies for y. Here's 45, 90, 135, 180. You could combine them both with just skew. Then again, you need two values following that same pattern. You can apply more than one transformation at a time. Let's begin with translate x by 100%, and then we will rotate on the z-axis by 90 degrees. Let's add a scale as well. I'll shrink this image by 50%. So yes, you can apply more than one transformation at a time. These transformations can also be applied to a class. Let's create two additional boxes. Box 1, box 2, box 3. I'll give each of these elements a class of box. I'll remove this transformation. I will select the box class, take all of these properties, cut them besides the background color, then paste them within the box class. Then let's color in our two other boxes, box one, box two, box three. I'll make box two red. Box three will be blue. All right, let's apply some transformations to the class now. I will set the transform property. Let's translate on the x-axis. Translate x by 100 pixels. Then let's rotate on the z-axis by 45 degrees. Then I will shrink these with scale set to 0 0.5. You also could apply these transformations to images. I just so happen to have a picture of Shrek in my computer. I think everybody should have at least one, right? That image is saved within my website folder. Let's delete these boxes, then include that image. Image source equals the relative file path of the image. All right. Let's take our image. I will apply the transform property. Let's translate our image on the x-axis by 100%. Then let's rotate Shrek on the z-axis by 180 degrees. Let's scale Shrek in the x-axis by 200%. Scale x, 2. All right, I don't know what the point of that was, but I thought it would be a fun exercise. All right, everybody, so those are transformations. It's a CSS property that lets you rotate, scale, skew, or otherwise translate an element. And those are a few basic CSS transformations.